so yeah, I want to tell you, uh, so I'm from, uh, I did a business school, I'm more from a marketing background, so I, I worked with engineers, but I, I told very few, very little. Uh, I'm French, <laughs> I do mistakes in English. Um, so, what I want to talk about today is more, uh, since one year I've been working in a small cooperative with a bunch of, uh, with four or five people now. Um, what we do is that we try to use social media uh, to help uh, social environmental initiatives uh, um, have cooperations growing around them, which is quite different from um, what I think social media is used for by brands. And uh, I want to, here I just want to first tell you quickly what's my experience, uh, the methodology we use in the cooperative. Uh, then uh, the context in which we do it, which is quite different from what we want to achieve, in my opinion. And in the end, uh, the reflection I want to have tomorrow during the day of production, so in case some people want to join, uh, we are already two on it with David. Uh, so yeah, a few key words. Uh, social media. I'm, I want to um, um, question the gap between social media and individuals' autonomy to actually do cooperations. Um, so, this is a pyramid, just a few principles that we use uh, to work, to do our job, um, that you may know. Uh, let's say quite, at 90% people don't trust brand recommendations or commercial brand recommendations. So this is a consumer point of view. Uh, so what do they trust? Who do they trust? Each other peers, yeah, peer recommendation. Um, Seventy-two percent of statistics are wrong. <laughs> so but it's just a new big picture, right? Uh, let's say uh, 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 2007, Nielsen was saying at 70, uh, 78 percent they were trusting their peers. Um, two years ago, it's 92 percent, so it's even more than before. So peers is like family, friends but also for really people who are strangers, people who have no idea who they are, right? Um, and then the third principle we uh, use is that actually social media, uh, in the whole social media content that is produced, 80% um, of this content is produced by only 8% of the users. 80% of the content is produced by 8% of the users. Uh, I will still split it into three, let's say at the very top you have the guys who are like, uh, the girls, who are like the celebrities, uh, let's say between the blogger and the celebrity, so people who monetize the attention they have, okay? So if you want me to talk about something, you pay me, I do pay her because I have that audience, okay? Those are much less than 1%, but let's say 1%. Uh, then you have 90% of people who just watch. They create no content. Zero. It's like forward watch. Impressions. But in between you have those 8% who create 80% of the content. It's unpaid. They do it because uh, for different individual interests. But this is what is those people who are interested to us to uh, create the cooperations. And here this is uh, you. Uh, not willing to watch the content of this presentation. <laughs> okay, this this is a drawing that you cannot see, so I will explain how the process and methodology we use. And there is a part missing. So uh, I, will, I will give you the standard process. Uh, we use a social media uh, analytics software. So uh, it's a software where we, let's say we are interested in putting together people who work on um, education through sport in uh, very poor areas, okay? Or um, people who want to work together on water access in um, rural areas. It's one topic, okay? We have one topic. We use a social media analysis software to check out the conversations. So you put some keywords, so it's water, uh, rural, that kind of stuff. 
Uh, you try to find the right keywords. And then, with those keywords, it can be, I put hashtags, it can be different stuff, right? Uh, let's say you get 10k conversations, 10,000 contents, so it can be tweets, posts, coming from forums, many conversational channel, right? Um, so we check out those conversations, now we know where it happens, right? Because with the software you know the, the location actually. The location is a platform. Or, or it's a person, there's a community around, it depends. Um, so you have the where. You also have the when because you see peaks of conversation. Oh, this day there's a lot of people talking. Has there been an event happening somewhere? Why? So there is a when, the what is the content of the conversation itself, right? And then, uh, actually this all is a bit interesting, but not so much. The only thing that matters to us is who. Who are the ones who created most content there? Or had the most, created the most content about that topic? Okay, because once we identify, let's say, maybe in the end it's just like 10 people, maybe it's 100, it depends. Because people don't talk about everything publicly. Some topics they talk about publicly, some others, no. For example, investors, you will not see much stuff happening publicly in the conversational channel. I say it because uh, I wouldn't be fighting my previous job. Um, <coughs> um, so this is step one, right? The only goal is this, because all the rest is uh, complicated to confront to reality. But once we have this, well, step two, we want to talk to them. But this is directly. Okay? We are in the cooperative, the people, we want to put them together, so we're going to we use the principle three I told you. Uh, the principle uh, two and three together. Um, that is like, so this who is the 8%, right? Who creates 80% of the content, huh? They take 8% of each. This is the this is them, right? The previous word of our process is basically they don't know us, but we're gonna do a simple process where in one month, from uh, since we know where they are, we saw the conversation, we write to them directly, and uh, from one step one to a step uh, ten, we want them to come to an event. Okay, that's it. We want them to come to an event. It can be online, it can be offline, but usually it's, it's better offline, right? Um, the event is about the topic, right? Three, they come to the event, like this one, for example. Uh, we didn't do the process for this event, but they, they, they come to the event, and what we do is that we cover the event live. So we just say everything that happens. Live tweet, we probably saw that. But the difference in the way we do it, than the way a brand would do it, is that the brand, she would send someone from an agency to talk in the name of the brand. Okay? We become like 20 people, and it's people talking with their own individual account, fostering individual conversation, bringing other individuals in the loop. Right? So to give you an example, we covered one conference last year uh, in Mexico, uh, 700 people on site talking about uh, different Topics, social topics, social business topics. Um, we have a team of 21, 21 people who are like live tweeting, um, but there were more than 2,000 people talking online. So there is a gap between the seven the people offline, but there is another event online happening. Um, and this is interesting because by fostering this conversation, we could connect some of them around the water access topic. Uh, so, the fact of doing this thing live is just to have more conversation happening at... So, the live... So, more conversations around the, the topic. And you write... Uh, I mean, you write a story about it. And then you have your... Uh, the people you recruited. So, let's say those 10 people plus some more people online that came to talk let's say plus, uh, I don't know, 50 people 
And then we try to make them do stuff together if they want around this topic because we know they are on the same topic. So now let's see how they can cooperate. And they're here. The problem I have is then what? <laughs> problem I have is then what? Because the then what haven't solved it yet. So that's what I want to talk about uh, now. So here it's the question is loose cooperations. How? What can we do? What should we do? What should we not do? Um, why, what, who are, when, and how? <laughs> so, before, so, before trying to understand the then what, uh, in which context do we do it? So, the context is a context of mass, of the biggest figure possible. So, in the social media analytic platform, in the end, you can do an awesome job recruiting like 20 people for a, a client that is actually doing social or whatever initiative uh, making 2,000 people talk online or whatever in the end they care only about one figure most of the time is the reach and the impressions so reach it's in how many Twitter boxes did it land that is easy, it's easy to do millions because you take the amount of people who spoke you multiply by the followers then you have, you have your millions but nobody saw it Right. But you have your millions. There's an even funnier figure uh, in the social media analytics tools. It's called impression, it's not the same as people actually see it. But they take the reach and they multiply it by the amount of time you saw it. Meaning that if I take one person and I make that person see one million times one content, I have one million impressions. It's awesome to get the client happy. <laughs> but, but it's absolute bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, this guy, I'm not sure you know of him, he's the CEO of Tencent, you heard of Tencent? China is the trust that owns uh, an app called WeChat, when it's waiting. That is, some say it will be the biggest app in the world, I don't know, but when I was working there, it was um, 350 million users, now it's about 400. It's something like WhatsApp, but in China, I think it's much better than WhatsApp. But anyways, this guy said, when launching WeChat, the only objective we have is that the users lose any notion of time. It's clear, I guess. So it's exactly in the same logic of, you lose notion of time, I want you to create content. Because the more content you create, the more advertising I can sell, for example. Um, so this is about actually user interface, right? So, for example, Facebook, do you know how much blue they tried on that platform? How many different blue? It's like more than 200 in the first two years. 200 different blue to make sure they have the best blue for you to stick to it a maximum of time. This is the, the, the research team, like the guy who did the user interface. Actually, I'm missing a transition. So, about this blue, it's important. Um, another funny fact. It's my opinion after, but. For example, in those companies, the UX UI designer is paid more than an engineer. It's the second highest salary after the architect uh, engineer. But it's more than the guys who do the app. <coughs> um, so what, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's <laughs> a piece of art. <laughs> is it the only thing you see? The Facebook. And the, the, yeah, there's notification. Okay, but your brain is probably seeing only the notification because you want to click on it, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's the it's the exact opposite of being attentive. The the um, I, I I I took part to a talk I found interesting interested by a guy called um, Stigler Bernard Stigler. You heard of this guy working on the philosophy of technology, how people are doing blah blah blah, especially social media and others. Um, and uh, yeah, it's actually the, the exact opposite of being attentive. Like you go to the museum, you are fucking attentive. You're trying to get how, why the fuck it's beautiful. <laughs> you have no idea, but you are trying to get it. You are attentive, right? Um, notification is the exact opposite. You are perfectly passive and you click. You don't know why, but you did it. It's done. Same logic than the three stuff before. It's different aspects. It's the same stuff. It's 
you have to create more content. Because the more content you create, the more you can monetize it. So this is the context in which we do it. And uh, this is the, another aspect I show you. There are probably many others I'm not aware of because I'm not a coder. But um, uh, this is what I would call the, the new propaganda. Um, I talked before about the advertising part, those who monetize content for advertising, that is the most tr super traditional media, right? Just put in social media, it's the traditional media. Here it's like the new media. So peers evaluation, I question it a lot. Why? I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that it's easy to hack. In China, you have companies you have who pay people uh, less than two cents to create any review on e-commerce websites. So you launch a product, you can see this company, and you have 200 people who are creating 100 reviews a day to make 80% to 90% positive reviews and 10% fake reviews. You have the peer recommendation, you would sell a lot. It lasts a few days. Okay? It's not only in China. In Europe, the same exists, but you have to, be, to pay more attention with law. Uh, so you do it with the community, you send them gifts, and they will do the reviews for your new app that was just launched. Uh, but it's, it's the same thing. It's just a different of mass. So <clears throat> pay attention of pe to peer recommendations. It's easy to hack. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's easy to hack because uh, because the fact is that now you trust uh, people you don't know. Um, so it's a transition to the last part. Like this was the context in which we work with social media, it's complicated because I, I, I'm wondering how individuals who met at an event and I know they're on the same topics and they want to do stuff together when they leave, they are like, I'm crying, it's awesome, I met you and stuff, and then nothing happens. Because when they go back to social media, uh, nothing lets them see, again, the, the same person. But there are many reasons why they get distracted. Uh, so I did several workshops and trainings for in, in the context of my job. And I always start with uh, uh, what you think is an opportunity, what, uh, basically what you like about social media and what are you afraid of in social media. And in the afraid, uh, the, the one that came the most is losing time. I explained it before why you lose time. It's not, it's not random. It's random. <coughs> it's losing time. There is the question of digital identity that comes back a lot. Right? Uh, uh, here I'm making the transition to uh, give my uh, personal, uh, a personal reading read of how we could uh, try to imagine a social media experience where uh, individuals um, have autonomy to then do cooperations together. So I give the, my, the definition of autonomy we use here is basically uh, people, uh, autonomous, so the semantics, you know, it's like uh, from Latin, nomos is the, the law, auto is like for self, so you do your law yourself for yourself to move in the life, okay? Um, so it's basically being informed and not coerced, like not forced when you want to do something. That's it, that's all I mean. Um, so you don't see it, but it's uh, Fukuda, Kiko, the oldest judoka in the world, uh, 99 years old, she died. Uh, why I'm using this? <laughs> it's actually more like to talk about. Uh, uh, I should start with the who actually. Um, like, <clears throat> from an individual point of view, I want to do stuff with others. Um, firstly, the who. What I would like to, to, to underline is the fact that the social media and social networks, the way they are crafted now, they put a lot of emphasis on the weak links. So weak links is like all the people who are not your first circle, but your second, third circle, like friends, friends of friends, 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 but you forget the strong links. So those who you really matter to in your head, but you don't spend so much time with them in the end. So here, taking it from a cooperation point of view, first I think it would be very important in uh, imagining a new social media experience, like a new visualization, to understand who knows what, Who wants to do what? And making sure the difference between the strong 
and the weak links. Understanding it well, I, I don't elaborate on it because it's the topic of backfeed. Uh, like, uh, I think I, I would like to know more about the tool and stuff because it's it's really what I think is important is that me, I want to do some stuff and I never manage to do them because I've been distracted by other stuff uh, in this whole flow of information. Uh, but I think that's part of the answer is that I'm always reminded what is the weak thing and what is the strong thing for me to move on. So the who. So you have those people, maybe you identify that for your project you need uh, those five people, okay? Wherever they are. So the what. So this is actually the slide for the what. I would say that uh, something that uh, I'm in the social media context, huh? not in cooperation in general. So what you can digitalize at some point. Uh, in the real life, to move on, uh, I just proposed one uh, grid, huh? I'm not giving the meaning of life. Um, so you have uh, need knowledge, like to achieve a goal. Like in uh, six months, I want that we launch this uh, APP that will solve uh, uh, hunger in the world. So it's a mix of I propose a mix of three things: knowledge, know-how, and uh, <coughs> in French we say savoir-être. It's like know how to be, know how to behave. So it's like savoir, savoir-faire, savoir-être. So I'm translating French like a bit stupidly, but it's like knowledge, know-how, know how to be. Uh, I try to decline it into the web, so let's say that uh, knowledge is a, a wiki. Okay, yeah, knowledge share. Uh, know-how in digital could be like a tutorial, step one, two, three. So that's you, you have your recipe and you produce this. And know how to be could be, for example, a storytelling on a TED. You know, then you cry and you're like, I can completely change after watching this video. Uh, so it's it's examples of uh, definition on, uh, in terms of content. So to move on, we already have options. Okay, just how we put them together. My um, like I this person because 99 years old. Uh, yeah. Watching the ground and trying to do stuff. Uh, before, uh, before this, before this, uh, before telling the how, I want to say the where. Now I say the when because it's easy. When can people actually? Uh, when you do a project, you're not always together, of course. Let's say that all you need to reach your goal, it's it's of course it's events, right? So when I just call it events, be it uh, offline or online. So offline we are here, we share knowledge, we take it back home and we do something out of it. Uh, maybe tomorrow we produce, so we are more in the know-how. We can share stuff, whatever. Uh, uh, by distance as well, like we can do it through Skype. It's more limited, but maybe we can work work together as well. You can do it synchronous, asynchronous, whatever. Let's say events. Um, for the where, and I think it's very important, this is where, here uh, I'm trying to imagine a new uh, visualization. Huh? It's what I want to work on tomorrow. So, what me, I see on my interface to move forward with the project with a bunch of other people. The where I think is critical, and the way today, at least me, I work with the tools and I see other working. It's interfaces that are not geolocated. So we share uh, information. I just see the content, the person kind of, the person I know in my head, the time, but it's not geolocated. And I mean, the biggest power that still exists in the world now, even though there is the third ICT revolution, it's maps. It's like maps is power, a geographical map. There is nothing more powerful than the map. With the map you do war, you do whatever you want, you know where the resources are, and there is nothing more powerful than geography when it comes to <coughs> resources. So just uh, being alive and doing stuff in life. So 
put it in simple words, the way I imagine it is like whatever we, wherever we show this, the people, the what, the when, somehow we need to show them where it is, but on the map. So uh, this is Africa, this is France, this is Europe, this is blah blah blah, China, whatever, here. So maps is so powerful, right? Because I put Europe at the center. In China, I sent Europe at the center, and in the US as well, right? <coughs> and last is the how. For the how, I use uh, uh, the model I like. It's like we say the what is the, all this knowledge, know how, whatever. Now, how is it processed? Let's say you have this bunch of five people. How do they actually share this to do stuff together? It's super complicated. One model I like is called the CC model. It's, uh, I mean, Japanese, they are the best to do that kind of stuff. Um, so, knowledge uh, is um, one way to, to, that is been studied, you have the tacit, for the first point you have the tacit and then explicit knowledge. Is, is the difference clear to you? So, to put it in simple words, is you want to say? Okay. So, it's, it's good in simple words, the explicit knowledge is what I can explain you with words. Okay? It's explicit. I, I tell you, you will get it, you will make something out of it. The tacit one, I cannot express it. You need to be next to me, watching me doing, and uh, build this chair. Okay, I can give you whatever recipe, the first chair you do is shit. You cannot sit on it. You cannot sit on it because of tacit knowledge you don't have. Okay? So, first you have this explicit tacit. So let's say it's an axis. It's too long? Okay, I can stop that. Um, we can work on it tomorrow. We can work on it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, you have now the, the five aspects. These are the main aspects. Right? Yeah, so uh, that, it's agreed just to basically the end of what I want to say. It's agreed um, that can be translated into formats of workshops, basically. Of different workshops. But I can explain tomorrow if you want to work on this. Uh, we spend some time getting the on it and part of the stuff at least. That's it. Thank you, sorry for being too long if I was too long.